morning everyone today we are going to start a new chapter of class 8 the chapter number 5 which is friction and you know this friction is related with the physics means you have to study this chapter of friction in physics so let us start our video with the friction and we are mainly going to talk about the friction its causes the factors affecting the friction the types of friction and how the friction is an evil or how the friction is a, a helpful thing for us we are going to talk about that so let us start our video with the chapter friction students you might have noticed that when we stop pedaling our bicycle then after some time and then after traveling some distance it get stopped similarly when we throw a ball on the ground then after covering a some distance after covering a certain distance gradually the speed of the ball decreases and after covering a certain distance the ball get stopped so there is a force which is acting against the direction of the motion of the ball and similarly in the case of the motion of the bicycle and the force which is opposing the motion of the bicycle or the ball or any other moving object that force is said to be the friction as you have already studied in the previous chapter force and uh, the first chapter of physics force in that chapter you have studied the types of force in which there were two types contact force and non contact force and out of contact force one force was the frictional force so let us define the frictional force i am going to write down the definition of the frictional force that what is frictional force and how it acts clear so students here i have written the definition of the friction let us have a look on this actually the definition tells us that friction is a type of contact force which type of force friction is a type of contact force which acts between the two surfaces of objects that are in contact with each other where this force acts this force acts between the two surfaces of the objects which are in contact with each other let us look with this example suppose i have one object this instrument box and this is another object duster suppose this duster is kept over the surface of this instrument box now it is in motion this is moving in this direction the forward direction so one force is acting against the motion of this duster from the opposite side uh, why because one surface of the instrument is in contact with the another surface of the duster so the force which is acting between these two is said to be the frictional force and due to that frictional force this object will stop moving on the surface when the force of friction ag work against the motion of the duster clear so how can we understand it it is clear from the definition that this frictional force is actually a type of contact force and it always acts between the two surfaces when they are in contact and it opposes any kind of relative motion between them means any kind of relative motion between the two objects is opposed by a contact force which is the friction clear now let us try to understand that what causes friction what is the main cause of friction to understand the cause of friction let us uh, look a activity look an activity the students the main cause of the friction the main cause of the friction is actually the nature of the surface which is in contact nature of surface nature of surface means roughness or smoothness if the surface is rough if the surface is rough then at 
that case there will be more frictional force acting against the direction of motion of the object and if the surface is smooth then at that time there will be comparatively less frictional force acts against the direction of motion of the object however frictional force always opposes means frictional force is always present it is not possible to eliminate the frictional force completely but that frictional force can be maximized or can be minimized depending upon the nature of the surface if the surface are rough then the frictional force will act more and if the surface is smooth then the frictional force will act less so let us try to understand it with this activity in this activity we have to take any of the metallic tray or any wooden tray like that of any surface hard surface on which you need to keep the match box or any objects like this and you have to make the tray or the metallic object or any object which you have kept in a tilted position like this and when you try to slide it pass down then you will easily find that it is going down easily but think what will happen if we cover this match box with the sandpaper you know the surface of the sandpaper is rough very rough so when we will cover this match box with the sandpaper then it will face difficulty on sliding down why because the rough surface will have more frictional force acting on it and due to that there will be there will be difficulty in the moving down of this match box so from this discussion we can conclude that if the surface is smooth if the surface is smooth then the frictional force acting will be less and if the surface is rough then the frictional force acting against the motion will be more lots of activities related to this has been also given in the various books you you should go through the books also every time when you are studying you should keep in your mind that you should sit down with your book pen pencil copies etc so that while going through any topic you will not face any difficulties clear so now let us move to our next topic this roughness or smoothness actually refers to the interlocking between the two surfaces every surface has some ups and downs on its surface if we look carefully any surface then it does not sometimes it appears to be very smooth like this but actually it is not actually it is in this manner means having ups and downs and when the two surfaces are in contact with each other then ups and downs of one surface get interlocked with the ups and downs of the other surface clear suppose this this instrument box appears very smooth but it is not actually smooth completely smooth but it also has some ups and downs on its surface similarly this duster also appears smooth but it is it also has some ups and downs so when we slide past it then at that time we feel that there is a frictional force acting on this and due to that frictional force actually the duster is not sliding over the instrument box why because the ups and downs of this get interlocked of interlocked with the ups and downs of this one and due to that there is a frictional force acting between them which opposes the motion so the main cause of the main cause of the frictional force is the ups and downs of the surfaces these ups and downs actually interlocked with each other and due to which it is difficult for the objects to move easily over the surface of another one clear let us try to understand it with one more example you might have seen the surface of the carom board the surface of the carom board with the unaided eye appears to be smooth but is it actually smooth no it is not actually that much smooth because it also needs to sprinkle some powder on it while playing the carom board 
what actually happens while playing the carom board when we sprinkle the powder when we sprinkle the powder at that time the surface of the carom board becomes a little bit more smooth why because the ups and downs which were initially present on the surface of the carom board are filled with the powder in those gaps powder is filled and when the powder is filled in those gaps then its surface becomes smooth and so it is easy for the coins to be move on the surface of the carom board easily clear so lots of examples are there which tells us that no surface is said to be completely smooth every surface has some roughness on it and this roughness is because of the irregularities which are present on the surface of that and these irregularities are actually the cause of the friction means these irregularities are actually the cause of the force which is applied by the surface against the motion of the object clear now we are going to talk about the factors which are responsible for the frictional force for the magnitude of the frictional force acting clear we have just discussed that what causes friction but we have not discussed that on what factors the magnitude of the frictional force depend so let us talk about that so now we are going to talk about the factors affecting friction so there are two factors on which the frictional force depend the first factor is the nature of the two surfaces in contact which we have just discussed that nature means the roughness and the smoothness more the roughness more the frictional force less the roughness less the frictional force more the smoothness less the frictional force less the smoothness more the frictional force and the second one is the force pressing the two surfaces together this one we need to understand with some activity force pressing the two surfaces together force pressing means the force which acts between the two objects when they are in contact with each other means the weight of the first object which is acting on the second object if the weight of the first object is more which is acting on the second object then there will be more frictional force acting between them and if there is less weight acting between them at that time the frictional force will be also less let us try to understand it with this activity suppose we place a wooden box on a table top this is a wooden box which is placed on this table top and this is at rest now to we need to pull it in our side and to pull it in our side we use a spring balance so that we can measure the force which is applied by us on this object in newton suppose initially we apply 5 newton of force so when we apply 5 newton of force in our direction then a frictional force will act against this why this frictional force will again work against the motion of this object because the surface of this wooden block is in contact with the table top suppose in the suppose when we apply the force of 5 newton at that time still the object is at rest now when we apply the force of 7 newton when we apply the force of 7 newton on it then we saw that when then we see that the block starts to move it just start to move so why by applying the force of 7 newton it just start to move when we apply the force of 7 newton then that 7 newton is more than the force of frictional force acting between these two and due to that it overcomes the frictional force acting between them and then it is easy for the block to move in the forward direction but here the second case we have to understand now suppose we keep one more object on this when we keep one more object on the surface of the wooden box wooden block then by applying the force of 7 newton it is not easy to move this in the forward direction to pull it in the forward direction why because now it requires more force to be pulled why does it requires more force to be pulled because now the force which 
is acting between this table top and this wooden block is more because this is pressing the table top with more force this is pressing the table top with the more force and so that the particles of the molecules of this wooden block will be get interlocked with the particles the molecules of the table top more firmly and when these are fixed more firmly then we require more force to pull it in the forward direction so if the two objects are in contact with each other with a with a great force acting between them which is for the pressing of the objects together then we require more amount of force to move the object it means then there it means that there is the more frictional force acting between them clear so from this discussion we can conclude that these are the two factors on which the frictional force depend factors on which the frictional force depend the first one is the nature and the second one is the force pressing the two objects together if the force pressing the two objects is less then the, there will be less frictional force and we need less force to move the objects and if the force pressing the two objects is more suppose we we keep one more heavy object on this then at that time the force pressing the objects will be become more and we need to apply more force to move it so from this we can conclude that these are the two factors on which the frictional force which is a type of contact force depends clear so that's all for today in the next video we will talk about the types of frictional force till then goodbye take care